It's good to see you, Mr Harper. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning. Um, let's talk about HS2, obviously part of your remit. I mean, we, we, a video has emerged um, on the Prime Minister's Twitter feed um, telling us that the HS2 northern leg had been scrapped. It was filmed before he left Northern Dining Street. Why didn't you just tell us that it was being scrapped rather than waiting till yesterday? Well, look, we've been working on this whole plan for a, a number of weeks, as you would expect. It's a big decision and we've been working on it. Uh, I have the legal responsibility to take the decision and I took the decision formally on Tuesday this week and it was approved by the Cabinet on Wednesday morning and then announced by the Prime Minister at our conference. So all very straightforward and uh, so I don't, I don't really know why people are getting so het up with this particular issue. Because you knew about it at the beginning of the week and you didn't tell us. Well, we've been working on this decision for, it's a big decision, we've been obviously putting a huge amount of work into it. I took the formal final decision on Tuesday and it was agreed by the Cabinet at its meeting on Wednesday morning and then announced properly by the Prime Minister to the country in his conference speech. Well, why did he record a video saying it was scrapped when it hadn't been? Well. We did lots of work in advance. We published a document yesterday. We laid a command paper in Parliament setting all the details out. That's obviously been being worked on. These are big, big decisions. We put a lot of work into them. That work was obviously done in advance. But the decision was taken this week on Tuesday by me uh, and agreed by the Cabinet and set out by the Prime Minister in his speech. All very straightforward. Well, why, why did he say it had been scrapped when it hadn't then? Because you said the decision was only made, made on Tuesday. This was filmed at least before well, last we, Sunday. Well, well, Kay, we, we published a document yesterday, a later come on paper before Parliament, which had been worked on, and clearly that had been worked on in advance. You do work in advance, and then you take a formal decision, which I did on Tuesday and the Cabinet agreed on Wednesday, and then we set it out. Now, look, we can keep going around this circle if you want. I've been very clear about what happened and the details, and I'm very happy to answer the substantive questions about the decision we made for okay. your, your uh, viewers. OK, Minister, with due respect, I do the questions, if you don't mind. I'll decide what I'm asking you during this eight minutes that we have with you. David Cameron and George Osborne both think it's a ludicrous decision. Yes, and they're absolutely entitled to their opinion. I worked closely with both of them in government and was very proud to serve with them. But that was a number of years ago. The facts have changed. The costs of the project have escalated. The... Uh, patterns of travel have changed post-pandemic, so facts have changed, so this government's taken a different decision, the Prime Minister's taken a different decision uh, that he thinks and I think is in the interests of the country about cancelling HS2, the second phase, saving the £36 billion that we were due to spend on that project and investing every penny in transport infrastructure across the North, the Midlands and the rest of the country on projects which we think will deliver better value for the taxpayer, uh, better outcomes for the people of our country. And that's a decision I'm proud of. The Prime Minister said... And what about speech, if those projects said, overrun difficult and, decision. Are, are, and are more expensive? Will you cancel those as well? Well, look, the Prime Minister in his speech, just finishing the previous point, said that he, he knew this was a difficult decision. He knew some people, including in our own party, wouldn't agree with it but he wanted to make the decisions that he thinks are right for the country. That's leadership, and that's what he set out yesterday. On your question about other projects, look, we will manage those carefully. There's a range of projects across the country. There's some rail projects, road projects, and in fact, as soon as next month, people will see the benefit from the money we're now able to invest in keeping the £2 bus fare cap across England, which is helping some of the lowest paid who depend on the most popular form of public transport to get around, get to work and to live their lives. OK. Um, let me play our viewers this um, from yesterday. This is what the Prime Minister said as part of his speech. A man is a man and a woman is a woman. That's just common sense. Did you cheer with the rest of the hall when he said that? Yes, I did. I think most people think that was a fairly straightforward st uh, statement of the, of the obvious. Uh, interesting, because um, I've been looking, I've taken the opportunity to look at the Equality Act 2010 this morning, which says um, that people who are going through a gender reassignment should not be discriminated against, and you can be at any stage in the transition process. So, actually, what he said is uh, against the law. No, not, not at all. I think what you're doing is. there is, is mixing up sex and gender. Um, he was being very clear that you can't change your sex. Of course you can 
change your gender and there are very clear processes for doing that and we've always been very clear about treating people with respect and kindness um, but, but getting into this sort of debate where we have these ridiculous things where for example we just insist on refusing to talk about women we don't have safe women only spaces for example in refuges uh, that is uh, that is not acceptable very controversial and I think you've got to balance the rights of different groups of people and protect the rights of women hard for all rights okay. over many years which many women think are under threat what's the difference between gender and sex sorry well Sex can't be changed, gender can be. Uh, I think that's very clear in the Equality Act. I was in Parliament, I was the shadow spokesman when that was going through Parliament. I think that's very clear. The Prime Minister set out a very common sense definition yesterday, which I think would have been supported by the overwhelming people in the country, men and women alike. But it's against law. The Equality Act 2010 no, no, says if you're going through gender no, reassignment, it, it, in other words, if you're going from being um, a woman to a man or the other way round, you cannot, you, you uh, are protected by the Equalities Act 2010. The Prime Minister is saying, no, that's not the case, you're either one or the other. No, he was talking about, no, he was talking about sex. You can't change that. You're talking about gender. He was very clear. Uh, all of the legal protections for people remain in place and nothing he said changed that at all. He was being very straightforward. I think most people listening to his speech yesterday will have thought he was spot on and wouldn't see anything wrong with anything he said at all. OK, all you should read some of the papers this morning, Mr Harper. Sense. Before I let you go, let me ask you um, about our report this morning about baby milk and the fact that some people literally can't afford baby milk and go into baby banks in order to get baby formula because they can't afford it to feed their babies. What's the government going to do about that? Well, look, there are obviously pressures on household budgets. That's why the government made sure in the budget that we uprated benefits for people on the lowest incomes, both in work and out of work, by the rate of inflation. It's made why we paid, the taxpayer paid half of people's energy bills last year. And it's why we've got the universal credit system to make sure we protect people, whether they're out of work and looking for work or hardworking families that need extra support. And why the Chancellor set out in his speech a significant increase, accepting the recommendation of the Low Pay Commission for an increase in the national living wage to help hardworking families who are at work. So I think this government's done a lot to support people. But I think what you're highlighting there is that the best tax cut we can deliver for people this year is to deliver on our pledge to halve inflation, to reduce the rise in prices, and we're on track to do that. That's the best way, I think, to help hardworking families like the sort that you're talking about. Okay, good to talk to you. Thanks, Minister. Thank you.